This is the second video in my do-it-yourself foundry series. A refractory lining is going to be needed for the coffee can foundry furnace that uh, is being made here. Various materials can be used to make the refractory lining. So let's uh, have a look at a couple of uh, possible materials which are usually readily available, and go from there. The first option here, if you can get them in your locality, is uh, what's called a soft fire brick. These are fairly light in weight for their size, and uh, the advantage of them is they cut very easily with the hand tool, such as a hacksaw or even just a hacksaw blade, so it's fairly easy to uh, shape these as required, and then uh, they can be joined together with the stove and furnace cement, or you can make your own refractory cement up with the uh, baby powder that's based on talc and uh, sodium or potassium silicate solution could be used to uh, join the seams where the uh, shaped fire bricks would be joined together. Another option, and the option that I normally use, is to uh, make up a refractory mix from a solid material such as uh, sand, such as I have here. Perlite is also used. You can get it at a gardening store. Vermiculite can be used, again available at a gardening supplier. And I've also investigated cat litter, which is uh, bentonite clay. Now cat litter is used uh, to make uh, sugar rocket uh, motor nozzles, so cat litter can take enormous heat and pressure. After all, it is bentonite clay, so it can make a uh, good refractory material too. But any of these materials, sand, cat litter, perlite, or vermiculite, are going to need a bonding agent to hold them together. The bonding agent used is a silicate. This can be uh, potassium silicate, such as I have here in this uh, half-liter bottle, or if you can get stove and furnace cement from your local uh, hardware supplier, or you happen to have a uh, specialty uh, wood stove type uh, store in your locality, you can get this uh, stove and furnace cement, which is also uh, based on silicate. But the silicate is needed to uh, harden the dry refractory material into a durable lining. Another useful substance is uh, baby powder. This is uh, talc, and uh, it's very fine, of course, so some of this fine talc can be added into the coarser sand or the coarser uh, bentonite clay cat litter. Another possible refractory material that seems to work is a uh, drywall compound. This is a bag of uh, sheetrock 20. Once mixed, it will uh, set up in 20 minutes or so, although it often takes longer if it's a little cool. Here's an example of a container that was cast from the drywall compound. And uh, once it was cast and completely dried out of all moisture, I actually put it in the microwave for about five minutes to make sure every bit of moisture was driven out of it. I then took a small paintbrush and I painted it inside and out with the potassium silicate solution to give it a hard and durable surface, which of course drywall doesn't usually have. 
I've already uh, put some heat to this one and uh, it seems to be uh, surviving well. Although I don't have a lot of experience using drywall compound for refractory, it seems that once painted with the silicate it uh, is durable enough that it might be worth considering. To make the refractory for the coffee can foundry furnace that this video series is about, I'm going to use the cat litter uh, based on bentonite clay, a little sand, some of the uh, talc baby powder, I'm going to use some of the uh, silicate based stove and furnace cement, and some of my potassium silicate. Now if you don't have all of these things you would uh, be quite fine to use just a little talc powder, silicate, whether you can get it as uh, potassium or sodium silicate or you get it as uh, stove and furnace cement, and uh, the bentonite. So really you just need these three to make uh, a good refractory lining, but I'm going to add the stove and furnace cement and a little sand. At the bottom of the screen here on this little piece of sheet metal, I've made up a test lump of uh, test refractory material that contains the bentonite clay, a little bit of stove and furnace cement, and the potassium silicate solution. For this test batch I didn't add any uh, sand or talc. What I'm going to do in a moment is put my propane torch on this and uh, see how it does under heat. Here's the lump on uh, the soft fire brick that I showed earlier. I'll uh, light up the propane torch here and uh, let's put the flame to this stuff. let it cool a bit and uh, zoom in. Uh, it doesn't seem to have uh, suffered at all. It didn't crack or break. It's still a fairly resilient cement-like lump. Uh, the surface wasn't even affected by the heat of that torch. I applied the heat for uh, about one minute. I think this will be a uh, good refractory to put into the coffee can furnace. When you make up your refractory, it's a good idea to make a little test lump like I did here and uh, take a torch to it and see how it does. If it does uh, as well as this one, uh, you should be good to go on making your uh, furnace up. While I'm at it here, I'll also take the torch to this drywall compound based uh, piece that I made.
this also seems to withstand the heat from my propane torch. It hasn't cracked and uh, the heat doesn't spread through it, so I can actually pick it up as long as I don't get, you know, within half an inch or so with my hand if the area I heated. The uh, drywall compound does seem to uh, discolor upon first heating. And, of course, I did paint this with silicate solution after uh, it was dry, but it also seems to withstand the heat. In the next video, I'll mix up a larger batch of this refractory material, and uh, we'll actually uh, assemble the body of the coffee can furnace.